Sniffer Clips, cut it out together, created by SFB Games and published by Nintendo, kinda came out of the blue for the Switch's launch. A couch co-op game at heart, it works by each player being able to snip overlapping parts of other players into different shapes to achieve various goals such as matching complex shapes, herding fireflies, and shooting a basketball. Each level is a single screen and usually has only one puzzle to overcome. A handful of levels will hint at what shape you have to make, such as a paper plane and a balloon popping level. Uh, really, there's no story here, just pure gameplay. When the main characters, Snip or Clip, is overlapping the other player, simply press a button to cut out that overlapping shape from the other person's main body, which would sound gruesome without context, and has been described from my friends as messed up. Cute and adorable graphics make it work though, and it's a unique game idea unlike anything I can recall, being more reminiscent of making crafts in elementary school. Precision cuts can be made by rotating yourself, or crouching or standing on your tippy toes. And if you make a mistake, well no problem as you can hold down the left button to reform or press it once for a quick undo. Snipping away too much from the other player will cause them to pop out from existence. But hey, there are no lives here. They'll immediately respawn good as new. Sometimes making a shape is a two-step process as I had to create a tool out of one character in order to make a particular shape on the other. And although the focus is on couch co-op multiplayer, hence the together in the title, you can play the game alone by swapping between characters with a button press, leaving the other one locked in position where you left it. Maybe because of this, no puzzle really requires moving together in tandem at a fast speed or real time. Snipper Clips starts off with a brief tutorial and is extremely easy to pick up and play, making it great for a party game. The trade-off though is that Snipper Clips was never too difficult, with the most difficult level taking 10 minutes tops to solve. Not once did I get stuck in a level and have to try a different one, Although if you do, you only have to beat a few of the levels before unlocking the last level of a section. And once I've found enough solutions, they generally could be applied to levels later on, even in the harder section of party mode that felt more like the screen was split into two halves, with each half being a puzzle for a player pair to solve. Fortunately, creating shapes never felt like a chore, and when more precision snipping was required, I'd become more immersed at overcoming the challenge. The only finicky part of Sniffer Clips was jumping on top of other players as a platform. Since you can pass through them normally side to side, sometimes when I was trying to make a jump I fell through. This happened more when I was in party mode with more than two people in tougher stages. The only other problem I ran into was when I first played through a level where an NPC had to avoid rushing water. It wasn't so clear that the NPC could pass by player legs, despite not being able to pass through the player body, since so much was going on. For the most part, Snipper Clips was very forgiving in its puzzles, with better cut shapes making things easier, but cobbled or but ugly shapes being able to get the job done. And usually if something appeared to be too tough, such as a wrench slipping, it was time to reform and snip away at a new, more refined shape. Maybe levels were more solvable because really there was no pressure in the form of a time limit and there were infinite retries, putting this game on the casual spectrum of fun. And the amount of fun you have will really be determined by how well you and your friend, or friends in 3-4 to four player, can work as a team and be patient as the other tries a solution. Some of the best moments I had with friends in this game were when one of us was trying to move objects with sheer will, regardless of being cut out for the challenge. The game's graphics are definitely of the timeless variety. Game worlds are based off of school notebooks, with a push of a pencil eraser serving as a level reset button. Whoever thought of putting grid lines in the background to line up snips with is a genius. And each player character has fantastic eye expressions that add a ton of life to the game, maybe even one-upping Zelda Wind Waker's eyes. Another neat tidbit is that the characters almost always look at each other as they move around. The soundtrack is mostly whimsical and fitting for the world. Sound effects are subtle, and characters laugh and giggle and grunt, but don't talk as you might expect from a Nintendo game. It's all low-key and an excellent contribution towards this game's relaxed pace. Note that if you bought a Fancy Pants Pro Controller like I did, you can't use it in Snipper Clips. Meaning that if you want to try three-person multiplayer, you're going to have to buy more Joy-Cons. Considering Joy-Cons also aren't cheap, I was a bit choked at this. Other than the Joy-Con, the game does support on-the-go play with Joy-Cons attached to the sides of the Switch console. Uh, Snipper Clips was just as enjoyable to play in a portable setup as when the Switch was docked, with no hand cramping on the controller. There are two different control setups, although I stuck with the default snip controls as they seem to make the most sense for me. Rumble is used for jumping and swapping characters. As well during swapping, there's a neat subtle shift in perspective to help indicate the active player character. When the credits started rolling in Snipper Clips, the end felt too soon since that was just after the 3 world mark. But considering there are 45 levels in the main campaign, plus another 21 in party mode, there's a decent amount of content here in what was an extremely well-polished title. 
polish even with significant amounts of physics and collision detection with a ton of different shapes. The physics weren't always 100%, but I found them fitting in the game's world, and friends would laugh it off if it was an amusing part of the game. There's not much of a reason to go back to previously beaten levels due to no time challenge or collectibles, but I'd consider that a decent trade-off for the overall quality of the game. However, for some replay value, there are three battle minigames, Hoops, Air Hockey, and Dojo. These reminded me a lot of the minigames found back in Mario Power Tennis on GameCube. I found the Hoops minigame to be difficult to score a basket, but Hockey and Dojo were fine. Dojo could become pretty frantic as player bodies were snipped away, resulting in less area to snip the other players with, making the match longer than I thought it would be. And another note for replayability, earlier when I said couch co-op, that's also saying there's no online play in this title. For me, that's not much of a big deal, but it is 2017 now, so maybe that is for you. In the end, Snipperclips Cut It Out Together was a highly polished, unique game that, while perhaps a bit on the shorter side, made a great Switch multiplayer game to have after my friends were done seeing Zelda. Would I buy a Switch just for Snipperclips? Probably not, but if you have a Switch, it's excellent for couch co-op or even single player, with puzzles that don't break your brain but provide decent challenge and great entertainment. I found it a cut above other indie titles and liked it a lot. Thank you for watching. If you liked this review, be sure to subscribe and follow Game Explained for more on Switch and other things gaming too.